great. Listen, so. once again, we remind people, do your Kegels. They're very important later in life, and it will help you, apparently, to be able to sell farts. <laughs> well, I guess so, Lord. Well, we're going to ask our first guest, he came in, what his thoughts on our topic is, uh, Bacon. I'm very privileged and excited to bring him to the show. Uh, he's done everything. He's been on national television. He's toured across yeah. the country, performing for all you great people. And we're very excited to bring him on Idiot Says What. Please give a round of applause to French Accent, a.k.a. Kevin Bennett, guys. Hey. Hey, hey Kevin. Uh, let me tell you. We need Jesus. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> what? What is going on here? I mean, this Thank is Thank you. This, this is like the fourth horseman of the apocalypse. Uh it's who yeah. who knew it would be farting and you, that's why people are getting the scorpion locust because the breeze and the fart smell and it's rotting their brain that they're, they're becoming a, a parasitic carrier. And how do you know? I mean, she's you are talking about the Kegels, different muscular group. <laughs> Let me tell you, the Kegels, colon, not the same. Not, they're close. They're close. Here's my question. What if she mixed it up? I mean, is there a guy, he's sitting there, he's like, listen, I paid $1,000 for a fart. You ain't going to pass this queef off. <laughs> I sent it to a lab. I sent it to a lab? There is all queef. No butthole. Yeah, that's I just see butthole. a guy in a white coat now with like doing like a <laughs> like doing a montage. <laughs> oh my gosh! This guy's got to waft it. He's got to waft it, and uh, well, yeah. safe, safe signs. Safe signs first, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh. No, this is... Well, to oh. add to your point, uh, when you're canning stuff, I want to know if she went through the proper procedures. Or are we getting like fucking bacteria filled farts? Did she do the proper boiling? And technique when you do home canning because you can get people sick. There's pink eye now all across the Midwest because of this, and it's not good. Like if you see a neck beard guy with a fedora and he's got pink eye, you're like, oh, you bought farts, didn't you? This is what yeah, happens. Yeah. To you. The, the best like part that. is like they're a thousand bucks a pop, man. And she's like, well, she had a deal for five hundred bucks. You're like, five hundred dollars for a fart, man. Like, that that's hundred bucks. That's a fart directly into my face. Okay, it's oh. not in a jar. Like that's sorry. Oh. What was wrong with the Victoria's Secret catalog? I mean, what was so bad? Why did we have to up the ante to, to fart jars and beast porn? That And it was so fast, too. It was like inside five or ten years. Like, everybody started eating ass and lost their mind. Kevin, I, I feel like your bougie lifestyle with Victoria's Secrets is a little bit higher than our Sears catalog wank. Um, <laughs> you're, ta you're talking to a guy that still looks at the turret. Uh, <laughs> like, hey, you coming in hard, YouTube. What's up? But no, he makes a point. I think it's lack of imagination, man. That's what happens with well, there's when you accessibility, have right? There's one of the things there is it's it's anywhere you want. It touch your, you know, at your fingertips, right? And that's it's a big deal. I'm right? glad you're on board. I was real nervous. I was like, he's got to be like halfway. The fart smell isn't even gone yet. We didn't even jar it. We're bringing up this guy. I'm I excited. Can smell it through the podcast right now. I can I can smell this Midwestern Kansas uh, uh, milk queens. Uh, there's got to hey. be some milk queens. and Canada and Canada. Don't worry. Oh, see, you're in Canada. <laughs> yeah, in Canada. Yeah. So she ships internationally. Uh, yeah, I'm sure she does. Well, I don't know. I haven't ordered it. It's, it's like Dino knows. Did you hear him? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah of course. Like, he's like, no, 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 not me. Don't check my emails. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys, man. That's all shit. It's farts <laughs> beyond borders, you know? It's a better service than the doctors beyond borders, you know? It's just, hey. it's keeping people from raping people. They just smell the fart and, you know, crank one out. It's a public Please service. Listen. We've all been in comedy. You know, you have to leave your home area to get popular, and then you come back, right? So it only makes sense that she would ship outside of the U.S. before focusing on her local market. She does advertise to buy local you people. Try to get into that no. Japanese market, you know, where they, they – Oh, actually... no, no. You can't. Those guys are way – they're selling underwear in vending machines. You can't touch that. Okay? Fart That's vending not... machines, boy. That's what I'm telling you. Fart vending machines. You can't get They'll... the seal on that. It's not. Oh, no. You vacuum <laughs> seal it. Like at a home. You can seal it. You know, she just gets one of those home sealers, and you're good. And to go on to Kevin's point, I think that monologue would be a perfect advertise, uh, advertise to have Kevin talk and then have Sarah McLaughlin play in the back of <laughs> in the arms of an angel. <laughs> just the so, hey, man. Oh my lord! 
I, I honestly believe, Kevin, I was half expecting when you showed up and we were still talking about it, I'm like, he might just turn off and be like, I'll fuck you guys and just turn off. <laughs> no, so thank no, you for sticking no. around. This is, this is what, this is, it's not the future we wanted. It's <laughs> the future we deserve. As comedians, That's fair. I agree with that. Listen, yeah. we can't, this is the only thing we can joke about, okay? We can't kink shame unless it's nope. farts. But soon enough, we won't be able to. Listen, I kid you not, there are mics in LA. You cannot make fun of people eating ass. Not allowed. Not allowed, you know? Because they, wow. they've got a business. It's shipping ass beyond. You know, we, we've talked about it. Mm. <laughs> that Well, that. That probably leads into, we'll get into some questions. How is comedy? Because you do comedy everywhere. I'm more of a Midwestern bloke, so it's stuff like that. How is comedy in some of those uh, states like uh, Los Angeles, like you mentioned? Is is there a lot more rules and nuances to it well, than maybe other places? It's weird. It's, it's actually, it is and it isn't how you'd expect. So um, last year, 2021, I didn't get to do comedy nearly as much as I'd normally do before the whole, you know, yeah. COVID fiasco. Uh, this probably this gal farted in a jar and a bat breathed it. But anyway, so I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't uh, I didn't get to do as much as I normally did. I did about 30 shows, about one every, you know, two weeks or so, uh, right. maybe sometimes four in a month. Um, but I did travel around. I made it from Seattle all the way down to D.C. And, and I made it down to Denver and I made it down to uh uh, California Oceanside, which is just south of Orange County, it's technically San Diego County. And what I found is it's like a it's like a checkerboard kind of, like mm -hmm. in Colorado, for example, Colorado Springs, pretty good. I mean, there's I got kicked out of a coffee shop for not telling her that's what she said joke, but that's another story. It's not as bad as like Denver. Denver, they they're they're sniffing that girl's butt and calling it feminism. That's that's what's going on in Denver. And then you get out to L.A. and L.A. Some districts, it's all like uh, um, Los Feliz, which is east of Hollywood and kind of north of uh, north and west, a little bit of L of Los Angeles proper. That's like all hipster, right? Okay. But then then you get down to like uh, Huntington Beach, which is uh, all the way at the bottom in Orange County, and there's some rooms that are more conservative than than Colorado out there. And then San Diego, nobody's wearing the masks. No, nobody cares. Nobody cares. They're they're not. Nah, we ain't doing it. LA, you can't even go into like fast food joints without having a vaccine passport. Um, so it's 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 weird. So like you'd expect it all to be just you know all blue on the on the left coast, uh, yeah. but it's not. Um, it's more than other places, but yeah, there's wow. still some okay spots. Hmm. Well, that, that that's cool. Uh, that makes sense because right here, uh, I I live in the very heart of the Midwest, Southern Illinois. It was never believed. COVID never existed here, whether it happened or not. But I liked it. it I got a little bit more freedom to perform because of that. Uh, so I, 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 it was good or bad. I, I Ethically, I had to think about that later. But at the time, I'm not really – I'm a stand-up comic, you know, and yeah. stages are there. Comics wanted to perform, so we, we happened. But th that was a good insight, man. I, I appreciate that. On that uh, other note, I've been canceled three times last week. Cancel <laughs> culture. Yeah, I'm getting my numbers up there. Uh, yeah. I, I don't have the credits yet, but I got the cancellations. So, like, we're getting there. Cancel culture. What do you think of it? Because, personally, I think it's real to an extent. I think it's a word people use to make themselves feel better. Like, yeah, we canceled that comic. But this comic never goes anywhere. We still exist. We still are around, and we're still saying the stuff we do. Is it more just to make like publishers okay? Like, is this like a ad friendly thing, or is this natural progression in comedy? Cancel culture is a uh, it's it's a it's it's cancer aids. It's it's gonorrhea. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Even Zuckerberg didn't like that, huh? Zuckerberg's <laughs> like, nope. We're talking cancel culture. We canceled Kevin immediately. Is it? Uh, oh. Is it Mike? Oh, it happens. We have a good time yeah. too. Uh, we'll yeah. see what happens. Uh, maybe I'll stop my cam. Maybe that'll work. No, it's not you. It's going to be it's on not. his end. It might. Uh, sometimes your your modem will cycle or something like that, right? But oh, we'll wait there. But uh, no, that's a good point. We actually, Dino, what do you think about cancel culture? I never even talked to you about you. We never got your input on it. It honestly has always comes down to a basic thing with regards to your. You know, I'm going to take him down just so he can. And when he comes back, it'll show up. But uh, it it comes down to the fact that there are varying degrees of purpose. Right? Is 
for all intents and purposes, the idea of uh, not allowing certain ideologies to propagate and go forward has always been uh, a way of controlling the populace and to stop insurrection and that kind of thing. The problem is it's now been weaponized and used on a daily basis for random stupid reasons where someone complains and you're like, you should be canceled. And you're like, that's not how life works. <laughs> Right, because the fact is that's just someone's opinion, right? And opinions, like we know, like assholes, don't matter. Hey, there we go. Hold on. Hey, hey Kevin. Sorry about that. I went into another room. Uh, we were no talking problem. about cancel culture and how it's AIDS. And uh, I, it, it, yeah, that's that's what we thought. We as soon as you said it, we thought you got canceled immediately. Zuck yeah. was watching, and he shut down the stream. He was like, "No, nah, we ain't having it." But then, uh, glad to have you back. Now, we, we were kind of on the same page here. I, I'll let you go ahead and finish your point. Yeah, yeah sorry about the dang internet. I should have known the room. Anyway, cancer culture there, yeah. is um, it's, it's gonorrhea AIDS cancer that is a symptom of cultural Marxism. And it has no redeeming qualities, whatever, except to divide people and act as a impediment to free speech mm -hmm. and free thinking. The ultimate end result of it will be the death of comedy. There's no comedy in China. There, there was never comedy in the Soviet Union. What, what was the best thing they had in the, in the Soviet Union? They had uh, Yakov Smirnov, and he left and came here. All right? That's, that's what cancel culture To is. Branson. Yeah. To Branson <laughs> McCurry, <laughs> what I might add. Yeah. I am the result of Lenin and Stalin. Now, Branson, be punished. In Soviet <laughs> Russia, you cannot have. Now we're going to have in uh, Soviet America. You know, the, uh, South Park did a thing on it. They had Jimmy. Yeah. He's like a uh, gay man walks into the bar, and everyone's okay with that because he's a nice fellow. And that's his. <laughs> that's his comedy in the future. Patton Oswalt apologized for oh. being in a picture with Dave Chappelle. Which it, makes the cancel culture. It, it's gone full yeah. retard. It's gone full Robert Downey and blackface retard. That movie couldn't be made today. And you know, you know, Robert, I'm going to get some better light here. You know, Robert Downey Jr. is not remotely uh, racist. Neither's Ben Stiller. No. Neither's no. Patton Oswalt or, or, well, Dave Chappelle. I don't think he's racist. I think he's against racism. So what we're seeing here is the death of comedy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think uh, I think you, you made a good point that no one said yet, and that, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm going to add to it. I think it's a death of comedy from people that um, want to be part of the show. I said this for the longest time. People aren't when they're offended. We always had hecklers when we did stand up comedy. It wasn't a big deal. Now we have a platform, social media, and they get to be part of the show. Mm -hmm. And sometimes them disliking us makes them more part of the show than liking comedy. I think that we shine the light and applaud some of this behavior. And, and necessarily we don't. Like, uh, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Like, why, why do we give a fuck okay. what Helen thinks in Montana? And we're giving her such power, like, oh no, Helen might not buy, might not buy Nikes. Get the fuck. She has a kid. She's buying Nikes. Get the fuck out of here. It's happening. She's stealing Nikes. Let's be honest. Yeah, um, uh, someone's is. getting clothes. You know, so yeah. like, well, I just don't get it. Didn't have any money. She can just fart in a jar. But <laughs> you got one yeah. out of a. Like you said, it's one out of a hundred people that just lose their mind. And then uh, they try and cancel a, a Dave Chappelle or something. Here's the thing. There's a book by a guy named Vox Day. It's about the SJW movement. It came out two or three years ago, and it's called Social Justice Warriors Always Lie. And it's got some good points. I don't agree with him 100%. He's got some great things to say, though. And one of the most important things is never apologize, ever. Apolo it's, like, it's like your girlfriend. It's like when you say, honey, I forgive you. And she's like, what, you think I did something wrong? Oh, shit. You just you stepped into it. Never apologize. If you apologize, you're admitting de facto you did something wrong, and then they shame you forever. What you do is you just have to be willing to cut that tie and just look them in the face and say, your farts stink, and you need to quit this cam life because you're ruining the world. You need to talk to Jesus and go to rehab, you stinky, stinky Kansas bitch. That, that's what you need to see. You know, you just got to be able to say it. You just got to be it's able to Connecticut, say it. sir. Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, oh, Connecticut. Oh, Connecticut. Well, they, could do, they could go too. <laughs> this time of year. Okay, hold okay, hold on, hold on. Let's let's put it this way though. Let's be honest, okay? So for me, I am a very conservative person in 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 my real life, right? But being mm. comedy, the fact is that I think there's a certain standard that we've lost, right? And 
Yeah. Having a heckler in the audience. I know for myself, some of the best sets I've ever had have been because of the clapback I had to a heckler. I had two hecklers. I destroyed them both. The video is on my YouTube channel and they had to eat all the dicks. It was great. Okay. <laughs> but because of that, I got such a great applause. Okay. Yeah. But the fact is there are a lot of other uh, people who, who I've shared the stage with that number one suck. Number two, as soon as a heckler gets involved, because of the kerfuffle that is that heckling conversation, everyone's like, ooh, they're so edgy and awesome. No, they just talk down to somebody because they're on stage. You can say anything. You have the mic, right? So it's. I feel like it's an avenue. It's the same idea of people who use spam and, and just try and flood the market with something where it's like, well, I was so edgy that everyone loved me. You're like, no, they, everyone had an enjoyable experience because they saw two people argue. Everyone knows, like, look, the best, the worst thing that the pandemic did, it hasn't given anybody an opportunity to watch two people fight on the street where you could just have popcorn and go watch these people fight. It's going to be so funny, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I love Dino had to promote his, uh, oh, I, was, I did great this time on my slide. You check out that YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the comments below. Tell me what you think of it. Give it a like, share, subscribe. Dino, uh, oh, so you had to put like cell Kevin. Phone. Are you kidding me? He keeps on doing this, and I'm like, fuck you, Kevin. And Press a beautiful he air. Listen, I ain't farting in a jar, all right? You know, actually, what if, what if <laughs> wait a hey, second. Our what if the Tresemme and, and, and the head and shoulders, what if it's really a bunch of Asian kids farting in jars and we've been putting this in our hair the whole time and we don't know. We don't, you know what? I've been in salons and it smelled like a fart, probably because those ladies just stand around and don't leave for a while and the smell congeals. But I always thought maybe it was the shampoo. That makes sense. Like they all have bad gas and so they're just blaming it on the phone <laughs> shampoo. We got like, a bad batch of shampoo. <laughs> that's, we're that's we're going to get canceled by the hairdressers association now. They're giving out secrets and lies. Well, that's not true. Out, well, for proprietary <laughs> secrets. Well, you know though, it's 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 true though. Like you were saying, I'm I'm also uh, fairly conservative. When I'm on stage, my objective is to make people laugh. Period. Yes. Um, and whatever they're laughing at, I lean into it. And I try, I try not to break any ethical ground, but my goal as a comedian is to bring humor, authentic laughs. Yeah. I started in Colorado. They're liberal as a cat's ass, in your face and unapologetic about it. I had to, from the beginning, start understanding there was a barrier between the local culture and what I liked. And I had to lean into that and learn to make them laugh first. Most of the cancel culture comics never learned that lesson. They mm -hmm. started out in Denver, or LA, or New York, or Chicago, where everybody believed the same as them, and it all became about one up in each other with how radically woke you can get. And they never learned to be funny, they just learned to be sarcastic. Yeah. And that's the one thing I hate about it. I, I actually live next to a, a metropolitan area. Being from the Midwest, you have your, I have that, I have the Midwestern, and I can go literally three hours and get the liberal city outlook on stuff. What got me the worst is what I hear from my experience, because I even even now I'm like, oh, God, I can't say in broad term. From my experience from there, uh, the people that shouted the most were the most offensive, too. Like mm -hmm. these uh, these people like, oh, this is ridiculous. This guy's performing here. This guy were the same people that were harassing female comics in the DMs or or being uh, negative to this. And that's what I hated most. It's uh, I'm a I'm a left leaning guy, but I know what hypocritical movements are. I know what yeah. bullshit is bullshit. So what happened to me is I actually had experience with this personally. I said, what's up? Uh -oh. See, going around. And I lost respect for him or lost respect mm. because why would you let someone do it for years? You know, like yeah. to me, it's like, why am I the Midwestern guy got to say like what he's, he's trying to do illicit shit outside. Like, why is that a big deal? And you're all claiming to be woke. You guys don't give a shit. You'll sell everyone down the river five minutes and at the local mic. Yeah. And that's what I saw was hip, which hurts everything. It hurts your, like on my side, you can't say, Oh, I support this and this, but your actions speak differently because all that does is counter the whole thing, whatever you're saying. But that's the one thing I hate most was the gatekeepers uh, mm -hmm. in comedy because everyone, like you got out, <laughs> you know, these people sometimes take 15 years and stay where they're at and they just like, oh, you're not funny enough. We're not going to do this or find yeah. a reason to do bullshit. Oh, you talked about being canceled three times. I spent 
more time in Facebook jail from March of 2020 till now than I've been out of it. <laughs> I, 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 I kid you not. And here's here's how it started. I was I was dunking on the COVID thing by using science and stats because I had to write. I don't get how, how dare comments. you? How dare but, you? You logic, yeah. logic and science. Right? How? <laughs> well, I, I had to write content articles on on why you need a flu shot. I I really don't support them. But what I did because I figured somebody had to write it is I looked up the stats on the flu and found out how often people died from the flu and what happens with the shot. I said, well, you better be 100% healthy before you take it or you're probably going to get sick because it's just an inoculation that gives a, an antigen, yada, yada, yada. I do the research. So I started posting that. They took something I said from 2019 in July or August and used that to throw me in Facebook jail in March of 2020. And what it was is I was calling... I think I called Gore Vidal a fag or something, which isn't nice. It's not nice, but but it's not wrong. It's just not Why nice. Gore Vidal? It's just not nice. <laughs> so that, but I, I, okay, okay, you know, I may have, I may have transgressed, but you still, the people on the other side use all sorts of terms, and and they they will threaten death. I mean, I've had death threats on me more times yeah. than I can count, and I, I don't report them because you know I'm not a Gore Vidal. You know, I'm not farting in jars and. A we, we don't we don't kink shame and we don't word shame. You can say whatever you want here. Probably we ain't gonna take down your Facebook page or anything. We ain't like that. But and no, everyone I knows feel, about Gore Vidal. That's fine. Yeah, we all know. Yeah, yeah, everyone right. knows. It's, it's like no no one's gonna be in our comments like, no, not Gore Vidal. Like, come <laughs> on, guys. I mean take it, it easy. Yeah. yeah, so that that's what's gone on though. when you take away language, it's it's Marxism, it's it's straight out of nineteen eighty four. And the thing is I, I think we ought to be able to use these words, not because it's good to, to, you know, make fun or be mean, but because governments and corporations should not be telling us what we can and cannot say. And you know that they are underwriting fart girl. So it's not like they're on some ethical high ground at all. There's no, there is no ethical high ground here. It's just, well, farting in jars is fine, but uh, if you think uh, it's wrong to put porn in front of kids you're bigoted racist and you don't get the vaccine i don't want the vaccine i'm gonna drive anyway you know it's crazy so yeah, it's, like back sorry, in the ahead. day we were sat in front of tv to watch sesame street now you sit your kids in front of a twitch stream like watch these guys in this bay swimming pool as yeah. they jump up and down for eight hours like what the I'm hell for sesame street otherwise i wouldn't know that uh that pete davidson is the aids muppet uh, that <laughs> I, if I hadn't seen that, I wouldn't have known. Sorry, I don't know if you like Pete. I mean, he's probably a no. Fuck that guy. I don't okay, give a shit. I, all I know no. is he keeps banging these hot girls and looking like a doofus. And I'm like, man, I'm using all this tresemme with the fart in it, and I'm living in a van with a cat. What the hell is he doing out there? Dude, you are right. We missed our time. Like uh, when we were growing up, you had you had to you had to try a little bit. Now you just look like you get a shift off at Applebee's or the local diner. And you're like, oh, man, I'm late for my next face tattoo. And Poon just gets <laughs> thrown at you. Like, it's ridiculous. We, we actually have a co-host that all he does is jump from house to house uh, uh, girls. He's like, yeah, it's the life. I'm like, what the? <laughs> like, he just, it just happens. It, it's the look now. He's a white guy with dreads and face tattoos that does MMA fighting. He's basically 2010 wrapped up in one. He's just watching <laughs> I didn't know you had Post Malone on the show. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I, had no, I had no idea. That's neat. With better hair. With better hair. A little yeah. bit better hair. Yeah. Fair he enough. does yeah. smell better, too. The rumors are true. Our, our <laughs> co-host smells a little bit better. Yeah. The prophecy is true. <laughs> <laughs> smells like a dreadlock and not a Connecticut fox. <laughs> Remember that? I, 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 South Park with the, uh, with the Tom Brady, and they're like, ooh, he's got the spaz. It's like it's like that's real life now. Like because they were going yeah. after the poop of Tom Brady because it had the the that bacteria in it. Now she's several thousand dollars. That's so sad because yeah. she's like it cost me so much. You just need to fart four times and you can afford a house in the Hamptons. What the hell are you talking about? A yeah. month, I mean, you know. Oh well, that's no. the thing is she's trying to say that well, it's it's hard to fart that much. And I'm like, listen, lady, come over to my house. Trust me, I could turn this place into a hazmat situation with just a a good iced coffee and a couple tacos. So, <laughs> hey man, I feel like I I, sh I should be better at catfishing or replacing the image that I have to be like, hey, I don't look like this. 
Want to buy a fart? And I think, I think people are I want, I want I want to buy one to see if there's any like decorative on the outside, like yeah, to make up like, for the thousand like flowers in it and stuff. But see, that's what that got me pissed off. Okay, because when yeah. you mentioned that, she it said be pure she mentioned. Fart. Pure yeah, fart. she mentioned flow, uh, flowers to help the fart's essence or something. Mm-hmm. I'm paying a thousand dollars. I want raw fart. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is yeah. going on here? I don't want. Yeah. I'm. You're paying potpourri. You farted on. Now it just seems like yeah. you're adding an extra step to potpourri. Like, what the fuck's going on? Hey, at a thousand bucks a bottle, I expect farm to plate fart. No middleman. <laughs> no tainting. Maybe a little tainting, but farm to table, hey. raw fart. Okay. Oh, it's like oh. sashimi grade fart. Okay, it should be pure, not adulterated with other things. Not I think we just found a new it. motto. I want a Whole Foods fart. All right. Yeah. Want, yeah. 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 A, a whole Foods Whole Foods fart with a bit of asparagus pee. Just a I little, want a, a little dash, maybe a drop. Right around I want the rim. A, make it sing. <laughs> I want a Whole Foods fart with a got milk commercial ad campaign <laughs> to push it to the masses. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> sponsored by starbucks <laughs> right. oh lord yeah, I, I i um i want one i'm gonna ask one more question because i'm very excited about this you were on a national competition uh tv show i don't want to name it but we we all know and all that was some story you could tell about us maybe on the backstage that was humorous all that because i know it's I loved your performance. I saw on there. I, I loved yeah. all of them, but uh, it was really fun, entertaining. I think you you lived in the moment and worked off the crowd. It was fucking awesome. But is that different than what we actually happened, or is that editing magic? Like, what is something you could tell us? Like, that was crazy about that experience. Well, yeah, I was there for about ten minutes on stage uh mm-hmm. and they 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 edited it down to five minutes for to fill their tv slot and they basically told the story but they cut out some of the best jokes they took some of my repartee and made it look like i prepared that and then some of my prepared stuff they made it look like repartee and i'm sitting here i was wondering about that um I, there's two things that are kind of funny they're not like hilariously funny but there's some neat backstage number one i was the last of 400 live auditions on this show and it was Friday, and it was near midnight. I was dead last, and they were ready to be done. Tyra Banks is backstage because she's supposed to go between. You know that she's not on my set because she saw the last one before me, and she says, all right, fuck it, I'm out of here. And she just left. Like, she's like six feet away, and I'm hoping to say, ah, I got to stop it. And she just got out of there. Yeah. She's done. She's done. Yeah. She's like, one more. This guy got a quarter. He looked like he sucked. I'm out of here. And she left. And I'm like, man, that was – nobody's going to believe me because I didn't even think they were going to air it. And then the other thing was – I had a head cold, and Howie Mandel is is a hypochondriac. Yeah. And so all I was thinking of, because I was there from 10 a.m. till about 11 midnight, right around there when they put me on, and I barely <sighs> ate anything, so I was kind of weak and tired, and I was like, okay, don't sneeze, don't cough, don't snorkel or anything, don't do anything. that will, Because Howie is the only one that will be on your side and understand what you're doing. The girls yes. will have no idea, and it's a foregone conclusion that Simon's going to hate you. And I, I, that's what I was thinking. And then the other thing I was thinking is um, just keep going until they drag you off the stage. Just don't stop until they drag you off. Because <laughs> you get one shot. So I didn't sneeze or anything. And Howie liked me, thank goodness. And the girls didn't get it until I got – see, I, 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 was, I told the audience because they laughed when I got a buzz. And I said, hey, you guys thought that was funny, but they didn't. There's more of you than them or something like that. And they didn't put it in the show. But I got yeah. them. I, I like – I rabble-roused a little bit. <laughs> and that Because that's what you do as a comic. It's about the audience. You you bring them in. And then if you get a – I just treated the judges like hostile hecklers, and it worked out. Um, but – Well, yeah, I saw like, something. They took their uh, they took their exes back. Yeah. They, uh, they, you got the whole crowd on your – and that's a true, like when I, me and my wife watch a lot of comedy and stuff, and uh, she was watching it with me. We got goose pimples. Like that was comedy. That yeah. was comedy. It doesn't matter what Simon says. Simon's going to play his fucking no. part in a reality show. But you, yeah. you connected with it, especially now that you tell me you were 400 out of 400. The last, the, yeah. they were done. They already had their Slim Jim hot dogs and they were ready to go home. Oh, and, and this is to be mean, it. but there was a, just you'll know exactly what I mean when I say this. Right before I got up, so they, you know, it's a variety show, different kinds of acts. 
they put a female comic right before me, and they hadn't had comedy for like five acts. No. And they had to, yeah, and then they put her right in front of me, and she just did the, you know, the mainstream woke stuff, which is just perfect, and you can't say no to it. And then it was me. <laughs> she, wasn't on, she wasn't on the season, so and she's a state. You know, she's been doing it longer than I have. She, she's out in um, New York at the time, and I think she's been on a couple of late night talk shows and stuff. So she, you know, she's already going places. But, but yeah, they put her up right before me, so that was the palate cleanser they got. Is that, and then I got on, and they're like, ah, no, we're done. Well, this is, and that's the funny thing is like, listen, I know female comics who are hilarious. And I'm like, it has nothing to do with, oh, you're funny for a female comic. No, no, no. You're either funny or you're not. That's yep. period. I'm like, it has nothing to do what your race, gender, none of that matters. You're either funny or you're not. And because don't listen to your friends. The crowd will tell you in the moment. <laughs> that's a oh, fact. oh, yeah. I've had, I've had, uh, I've watched comics, both men and women go, oh, you can laugh at that. And everyone's going. No, just nah. not go out. and you're going. Yeah, it was it wasn't funny. I'm like, listen, yeah. if you want to be edgy, like what I really respected about you was, yes, you did bank on Howie seeing the artistry behind your your set, and it was they, that was a very uh, uh, high level interaction, which I loved. Thank but you. the fact was that a lot of those people were like, I don't get it, and you're like, that's because you're dumb. <laughs> you're dumb. That's why you don't get it because you're the reason we can't have nice things that simple right that and, and yeah. well and that's why i'm like there's a different interaction like that's why especially during this the pandemic time like throughout the show i've always said i'm like i'm i'm pro vaccine it's like i think that's science and everything great but i am pro pandemic uh because i i think we should spend less time together and have more separation in general where nobody's talking to each other because they're the worst <laughs> um i just don't care like uh, to uh, piggyback on your thing if you're vaccinated i don't care like, no, I, I'm going to forget your name anyways. Uh, the only reason I care is because, like, the only reason I know it now because it says it on your name tag. Thank you, Helen. I want plastic instead of paper. Maybe go on my day. Like, I really don't care about the common interactions what people have on vaccines because I chose to do my thing, and they could choose to do their own thing. That's well, that's kind look, of my thing. I'm I'm not vaccinated, okay? But I've also been isolated the entire time. I've had the ability to be at home with my family and I don't go out. Okay. And then the pandemic happened. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, I was allowed out before. Uh, I have to wear high vis though. I have to wear high vis. Otherwise somebody will shoot me. <laughs> that was well, he's, he's a little hairless now, but he was actual, the first Bigfoot filmed in Canada walking around. <laughs> You'll know me from this picture. <laughs> that picture with, with my black cardigan on, that's something like, huh? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, like it's in general, I'm like, yeah, I've been invited. People are like, Hey, are you, uh, are you able to come to a show? And I'm like, no, and they're like, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm like, they're like, Oh, aren't you vaccinated? I'm like, Hey man, listen, we don't, that's none of your business. Number one. But number two, I have old people at home. I'm staying isolated. I'll see you guys in a couple of years. It's no problem. That's fine. Like, mm -hmm. I'm do I do this. I talk with people on the internet. You know why? Because it's funny and realistically, most of the people I want to punch in the face. So this is better for everyone. It's fair. Well, and you know, the thing is, that's that's the big that's been the biggest problem with this whole thing, is they're um they're not letting us do our they're forcing people to do one thing or another. You know what? If you want to wear a mask, do it. Don't tell me I have to or I can't be on this flight. But if you want to wear it, fine. If you want to get vaccinated, fine, get vaccinated. Don't tell me I have to do it or I lose my job. That's, All that's they had cool. to do was encourage people to do the right thing, and they would have yeah. had so much more support. When they did the oh. mandates, that just wasn't yeah. right. Well, that's yeah. the thing is, listen, there's a reason why murder is against the law, because a lot of us feel that murder is A-OK, -okay because some people are trash. <laughs> but it's against the law because that interacts with other people. And you're like, no, 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 you can't do that. That's why it's against the law to even try and kill yourself. Why? Because you need help. I'm disappointed by the lack hey, of... You were worried Shut about what up, you man. were going to say, Kevin. You, you were worried about what you were going to say here at Idiot Says. Well, we're free. Oh, we're yeah. free. Like, like uh, uh, One more question. I know I said the last thing, but it goes on topic because we're going to talk. How do you feel about bacon? <laughs> bacon. Uh, I'm mixed on bacon. Here's the deal. I love bacon. I love yeah. I love just getting naked and rolling in bacon, but well, it's does? got, you know, it's it's got... Pork has got trignosis because they 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 eat plastic and dead things and they, you know they will go through bone like butter. Hence the expression "greedy as a pig." Snatch reference if you know it. 
But that's right, Gov. I take offense to that. I take offense to that. <laughs> <laughs> you just became the coolest motherfucker in my book. That's all I'm saying. I love bacon, but the thing is, I, I, there are problems with pork, and it's weird because, like, I like it, but I know there's so I eat it, and I'm like, oh, I should, but I love it. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like a, I guess I'm not Jewish, but I kind of, because they actually love bacon. A lot of Jewish people love bacon, but it's like, oh no, we can't do that. We can't. I'm kind of like the, I'm, I'm in the same boat, kind of. Well, I'm not tr- like, isn't it kind of just because it's taboo? Like, maybe that's why, like, they go, ooh, look at me. Like, they're probably like, I I agree with you. I was raised that pork was a filthy animal just because my Ed number two was <laughs> just thought it, we need to be fitter. So, uh, uh, but the problem well, with my. That worked out great. Yeah, well, hell. Hey. <laughs> ying and gang. We were, it's the reason why he was stepdad. We had different genes. Like mine were bigger than his immediately, so he, he was a little little intimidated. But uh, no, <laughs> bacon wise, we got turkey bacon, and I think that's the problem. You can't if you there's no substitute to bacon. No. There's full bacon, or you get no bacon because yeah. turkey bacon. You shouldn't be able to put a, a a curd of fucking egg in it and roll it up and have a little like it is flimsy. It does the wave. Oh. It, it it bites back at you. It's more rubber than. It, 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 how dare they? It's not bacon. No, it's 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 it is an insult to call turkey bacon bacon. Just call it. Um, I don't know. Uh, bacon uh, strips bacon, and feed it to yeah. your goddamn dog. No, just call it yeah, turkey. That's, right. that's all it is. It's fucking turkey. Listen, the fact yeah. that we had to go to turkey bacon instead of going to beef bacon first is just stupid, okay? Oh, you reminded me of something, though. Now they have bacon jerky, and it is sinfully delicious. You can get it in the gas station. It's like 10 bucks for like 10 strips. You don't care. You'll eat it all. Before you get to your car, I will anyway. It's good stuff. I recently uh, came across bacon jam. Uh, It was on my Wendy's burger. And I know Wendy's is like the worst it could do. And even they did bacon jam commercial. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm giving my right foot to this now. Like I, I am a fan of bacon jam. Like I, I hated all bacon and desserts. I was like, as a fat guy, when will it end? It's in every meal. It doesn't need to be in desserts. But then bacon jam came in my life, and I was like, baby, you need to move aside. So we need to make room for jam. Little PSA: If you lose your foot from bacon jam. You have an addiction issue. I'm just gonna say that up there. Okay. You can't not you saw my gym. trailer. What do you think addiction is? You know exactly where it's coming from. You need to go to Connect you need to go to Connecticut Fart Girl. And you gotta smell you some farts. The whole thing of bacon jam. And uh, and then here's the here's the genius bit though. You don't pay for it. You have her do the farts as a promotional partner program with the bacon jam producers, you see. Oh my god. Then Lord. you get it for free. And it says win win, and you don't have to pay her for it. <laughs> Fart Sorry. Jam 2022. Fart a boogaloo. For, for more OnlyFans hacks. Oh, gosh. Oh, I like this. We could get sponsored by maybe the fart pads that you put in your underwear that oh, filter man. it out. This could be cool. an event. Um, I've already did eight hour live stream, and I'm never going back, though. So that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, that, that was last week, and it was brutal. Oh, man. <laughs> No yeah, video yeah. games or nothing, just us. Yeah, we had like 20 guests, some music. We actually played a good interview. We interviewed uh, Eddie Brill uh, a couple months ago and we finally aired part of it. We got it. And yeah, it was great just because you know, hearing from somebody who's been on tour and everything like that, like I'm still fairly new to comedy. I was only, I'd done it for about three years before the pandemic hit. So in total, it's like 19 years, but you know, just the three before and then this whole pandemic time. But it's different, right? So I'm sure you you're doing. In, you knew you were in trouble when I was the crafty veteran of this fucking group here. <laughs> you're like, Is this the captain? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, uh, almost yeah, a decade I'm, now. Yeah, I'm more of a professional, like, life-wise and that kind of stuff. Not comedy, yeah, I'm still still kind of uh, figuring that out. I would look forward to doing it. But it's interesting just to hear uh, the experience of traveling and everything. That's always uh, Well, I'd say, cool. you know, uh, with comedy and you, you're figuring this out, um, keep doing it. Uh, yeah. Whatever you do on stage, have complete conviction and keep writing. Yeah. And that's a, what, what happened to me. I, I still write, but not nearly as much as I did when I started. 
And yeah. I've, I've heard the same thing happens to other comics. Like I, I would write like Louis C.K. when I started. I'd get a new hour of material a year, only about 10 minutes if it was any good. But, you know, I'd, I'd, perf I'd perform it. And I'd keep cycling those jokes. And then I started to get the stuff that was good. And now, you know, I still write, but not nearly as much. So keep, keeping the discipline of keeping those funny thoughts and, and yeah. working them out. And that's the biggest problem with the pandemic is we need a real – you can't rehearse comedy without an audience. You can get, the, but you need you like you said about the the gals. There are some funny women, but a lot of the Damn. women who do comedy, you're just doing it because they're like, men don't get to own this part of society as well. And it's like, well, you no, know, you need to be funny, sweetheart. I I can't I can't be a good parent if uh, if you know I put the kids in front of Fart Girl. That's not there's there's a limp. There's good and bad. You've but got to. So, You've made choices. <laughs> yeah. So that's, the, that's yeah. the rough thing about now is you really do yeah. need an audience with comedy. And I can still yeah. do it because I've got the material. But I miss, you know, before the COVID, I get up a minimum of four or five times a week, sometimes twice that because I do two mics yeah. a night. And then I get a showcase. Oh, yeah. Now it's – that's two months, and that's no good. That's no good for anybody. So we – yeah, there's got to be a way to get back to live shows, and they can't be inhibited by restrictions. You know, underground comedy – it's it's almost got to be you know Nirvana in the in the alley kind of stuff. Yeah, it's very true. Uh, you you hit on a point. Even though there was a slight boom after COVID, we all opened up. Comedy was like huge. It, it felt like I talked to a lot independent on the independent circuit, like myself, because a lot of people around here are comic producers. You build your stage, you get a group. Like it's just part of it here. You kind of help out a little bit. Uh, but I, it was a huge boom because everybody wanted to get out. Us have been doing it for a little bit longer than the new people that just started in here knew the boom was going to bust. Mm. And we're now in the bust. Bur uh, bust and it's weird because yeah. uh, people want to get back out there, but there's still apprehension. There's still this and that. And there's always a commentary about it. Like you can promote your flyer, but then you might get one guy that's going to say some bullshit about it. You know, it's a whole new different thing. Uh, but what I will say, credit to the people that are still uh, going out there and supporting us live because that's the bread and butter. We're doing it for you guys, and we wouldn't be there literally without you guys. So that's the badass thing is hopefully in your area too, there's still fans of this and still coming out and trying to do it. Maybe not as much as it used to be, but hopefully we're getting back to where we need to be. Well, I'm saying just don't force the inclusion of everyone in the contest of spitting in each other's mouths. Save that for over, only for people who want it, not just everybody. You know? Yeah, that social shit is just going to – it's a self-jerk off for every scene. We've If you've traveled, oh, yeah. it, you, every scene has their little – it's all small town things. Like that's what I'm like. I, I, everyone seems to know each other after a while and do it. So you get these arguments and, and stuff oh, yeah. like that. But uh, I do, I do hope everyone lightens up and I think the bubble will burst on that too. Uh, but yeah. right now we're in the thick of, you got to, you got to watch every adjective and that really fucks with comedy. Cause you can't be who you are on stage. You can't be yeah. who you are on stage. If you're reading a script. I read the audience and I try and do this. I will write out, if I'm headlining, I'm going to write out an hour of material. I'm only going to do about 35 to 40 minutes of it straight, and the other 20 minutes is going to be whatever crowd interaction happens. Sure. Just, just, it happens. Yeah. You can't control it. You just got to <clears throat> kind of factor it in like uh, like piss stops on a, on a <laughs> road trip. But I will have a joke that's a little edgy and then a safe one and then a little edgy one. And depending on how they react to the edgy one, if they like it, then I'll go to the next one. But if they don't, then I'll skip on to the next safe one. So I'll kind of sandwich yeah. them in there. Um, so I've got a joke. Um, oh, uh, somebody, I I saw a meme on, on the internet and it likened the transsexual experience to a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. And here's how I know whoever made that meme never saw an actual tranny. Cause uh, let me tell you something, that ain't a butterfly. As a caterpillar with lipstick, all right. That's not, <laughs> and and if they laugh at that, then I know I can I can go into my next. And if they don't, then I say, "Ooh, I've taken my life in my hands." And I I kind of halfway I'll do like a make fun of a fart or something that's like seems edgy, but it's not. Um, yeah. And and then and then get, so you can still say anything. You just got to see what your crowd's doing. And honestly, there's always going to be some Karen in the group who hates it. And if she starts heckling you, like like you said. Get her, you know. Get yeah. Her. Oh yeah. Well, that's this is the thing is there's a difference in in uh, having integrity versus doing your job. Your job, like, and right. I've always felt this is my job is to make people laugh and have 
People should have come out to have an enjoyable time, crack a couple laughs, maybe a little interaction, and yeah. go home enjoying themselves. So if yeah. I go up there because I need to say my piece, well, now that's a TED Talk, and that's not what people paid for. You're an asshole. This is comedy. You know? It's not yeah. slam poetry. And the, no, it's, oh. it's, not, it's not slam sarcasm that's clap back. It's, it's you know, yeah. it, and that's so here's crazy. Here's a trick I learned, uh, and it's going to be terrifying to anyone, but I, I implore you to do it once, and it only works in small environments. If you got a small, like, this is for newbies, maybe my level, amateurs. I, I still do it because I like connecting to crowds, and I don't bring them in. So, like, sometimes 20 is all I got. I leave the mic there and I go into the crowd and I talk to him. I talk right. to him and tell you jokes. The reason why I do this is to work on my crowd work and connecting with the crowd. So, because most of the time in these small areas, they're like six feet away. They don't want yeah. to be in the front row. They're afraid. I'm going to, so I disarm him immediately. Go, hey, I don't need this fucking mic. I pull it. I got a big voice. I could talk to you right here. And then I jump, you jump and go over there and talk. I employ, feel out the situation, like Kevin said. But if you got a small crowd and they're doing that, talk to them. Talk to them and see if what you can do. Have your prepared sets, like he says. Know kind of where you're going, but have that open for improv. Improv. And you'll do some of the best shows I've ever had. Yeah. People are like, like, dude, you're amazing. Tom Ross kicked ass. They never get your name <laughs> right. Never get my name right, but they love it. They're drunk and having a great time. I love And that's that's all I'm here for, you know? Tim, and, I love uh, that you're like, some people, they're afraid. They don't want to interact with. So what I'll do is I'll come right into their face. It's like, <laughs> hey, I man, do it with hecklers. Oh, you, oh, I'll, no. I'll give you See, two I, times. Yeah, I will. Uh, if I give you and you're still being a, a sour in the mud, fuck you, dude. Like I'm not. You've shit on everyone for ninety minutes. We've retaliated to you, and you're still sitting there frowny face and still giving me. I could be Dave Chappelle rocking your ass. You're just go. Who's this guy coming to my town being funny? Fuck you. Give this guy his five bucks back. Let him go home. And that's just my. Opinion. I know I'm different. It, we're we we're never supposed to say that, but fuck I that know. guy. I I've think had... we should bring back punching in the face. That's what I, that's my belief is that I was built for that. Okay. I'm the youngest of five kids. That's four boys in that family. That's two tag teams. I grew up kicking the shit out of each other. I feel like that interaction between the audience and the performer maybe has a place now. There is Isn't some crossover with wrestling and comedy. There is some cross, just just a little. Bit. I'm big enough to be under the giant. If you find me six midgets, I'll do it. Let's, let's well, fucking love it. go. I have, <laughs> I have it. A drunk Mexican lady in Pueblo chased me with a plate once while I was on stage. And what had happened was the comic before me had been making fun of her and her drunk party who'd been drinking at this bar in East Pueblo all day. And they were just soused. And he didn't get the joke until that comic was off stage and I was on stage. And her drunken brain finally put it together. I'm in the middle of a joke. I haven't even addressed this woman. All of a sudden, she stands up and screams top of the lung. You talk a lot of shit. And then she came, she came at me with a plate and started chasing me around the mic stand. And it was the funniest show ever. Because, <laughs> you know, the people yeah. who weren't drunk, they were laughing. And, you know, I, I grabbed the mic and I'd act like I was going to give it to her. And then I wouldn't. And then her, her drunken kids dragged her out of there. So sometimes it happens. It, you just I, that was the last time I took mom to a, a stand-up <laughs> comedy show. We, we weren't allowed back to the establishment anyways. But Hey, man, I just want to personally thank you for coming out, uh, taking time from your busy schedule and everything. You were kick-ass, dude. I appreciate it. Anything coming up you would like to plug maybe uh, in the future? Well, thanks for having me on. This was a lot of fun. Um, I, anytime, just let me know next one you're doing. As long as I got it in my schedule, I can do it. Uh, next show I've got is in Williston, North Dakota on the 12th. Um, I don't know the venue yet. Um, I'm going to get an email <laughs> and they'll tell me. <laughs> um, so uh, I, apparently there's a guy in Vail, Colorado, who run, Mark Masters, he runs a couple uh, rooms, and he, did, he does a good job. I got to stay, on, stay in this condo uh, nice. in Vail. It was, it was, it was great. Nice. Um and he he's done that room, so apparently it's uh, it's getting some circulation. And he told me about it, and I'm supposed to give a sticker to a gal, and it'll be cool. So I got that coming up. Um, I'm going to do an interview in Simi Valley on the 20th, but it's for like a documentary about why cancel culture sucks. So I don't even know if it'll get made, but I'm going out there. I'm seeing an old buddy from before COVID. 
you know, maybe I'll do a mic or two. You know, you know how these things go. What do we do? The gets canceled. That's <laughs> the truest statement <laughs> we've had all year. day. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. you know what? It's always a credit. He's like, yeah, I was in this cancel culture documentary. It's big, but you might not have heard it. It got canceled. You know, it's, you can always, you can always say you did that. No, no, who, they can't prove you wrong. Um, anyway, okay. thank you for having me on. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, uh, my comedy album is I'm from Wyoming, obviously, by French accent. And you can find that anywhere online. Just look, I'm from Wyoming. It's an older set, but it's fun. And it uh, I, I've, I guess that's about it. Awesome. Dude, uh, definitely check out his album. Very funny. Please give it up for Kevin Bennett, guys, a.k.a. French Accent. Check out his album and see him live in South Dakota. This has been awesome, man. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Y'all keep it real. God bless y'all. Have a good night. You too. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, 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 stop. Give us a like, share, and a subscribe, and get out of here. Watch Idiot Says What live on Facebook and YouTube every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.